gone. <laughs> right. Bear with us, guys. The NHS COVID-19 app is a vital part in the fight against coronavirus. Now, based on Apple and Google's privacy-preserving technology, the app will help us safely live our lives, protecting you and others. If your postcode district becomes high risk, the app will let you know and give you advice on what action to take. And if you come into close contact with another user who reports a positive test result, the app will send you an anonymous alert. A built-in QR scanner lets you check into venues quickly and easily. You can check your symptoms in the app, and if they suggest you may have coronavirus, the app is an easy way to get tested. Any data shared with the app is held on your phone. Nobody will know who or where you are. You can delete the app and all data at any time. The new NHS COVID-19 app is the fastest way to see if you're at risk from the virus. The faster you know, the quicker you can alert and protect your loved ones. Can you, can you go on to the next slide, please, and try to explain a bit more about the app for me, please? So, the Test and Trace app, it's going to be used along, alongside traditional contact tracing, and it's going to notify users if they come into contact with someone who later tests positive for COVID-19. The app will allow you to report your symptoms, order a test, check into venues, um, by scanning the QR code and it helps NHS trace individuals that may have COVID-19. It will also help the NHS understand if the virus is spreading in, in a particular area and so local authorities can respond quickly to stop, this, to stop it spreading further. And the app launches tomorrow on the 24th of September. Some of the commonly asked questions about the app are, can I identify a user, an app user who has tested positive for COVID-19? No, so the app doesn't allow you to identify any users that test positive for COVID-19. It uses random unique IDs that are used to make sure the ident identity and privacy of anyone using the app is protected. Um, users are advised to keep their phone secure as the alerts on the app will be visible to those who can access your phone. Um, will the app drain my battery? So the app uses Bluetooth low energy and it will have a minimal impact on your mobile phone battery, especially if you normally have Bluetooth enabled. Um, and will the phone work, well, sorry, will the app work if my phone is locked? So the app will work when your phone is locked, as long as your phone is switched on and Bluetooth is enabled. Um, an exception to this is if you've just restarted your phone, so you must first unlock the phone to trigger the app to start working. Um, but this is only required when you restart it. You don't need to open the app. The random unique IDs are codes that are made up of letters and numbers. And these are shared between phones and they change every 15 to 20 minutes. So this is to make sure that you, users cannot be identified by their phones. Um, one of the key things with the app is that you need to have your phone updated. So why do I need to update my phone's operating system? In order for the app to work, you will need to update the latest version of your phone's operating system installed. For Apple's, Apple phones, this needs to be thir version 13.5 or higher. And for Android phones, this is Marshmallow or version 6.0 or higher. And you can see here that there's um, more information on the COVID-19 NHS website um, on how to upgrade your operating system. So that would be really helpful for everyone when they're downloading the app, especially if it doesn't work first time. So this slide is just um, a guide on how to use the QR codes when you check into a venue. So you download the app from the App Store or Google Play Store. Um, when you visit a venue, you check to see if there is an NHS 19 code QR poster, and it should be outside of, of every venue. Um, you open the NHS app and you tap venue check-in. Um, you use your smartphone camera to scan the code on the poster. The date of your visit will be stored on the app and it won't be shared with anyone else. After you scan your QR code on the poster, you are now successfully checked in. And if you go to another venue, you can open the app and tap venue check-in and repeat the steps above. 
Well, you may get an alert on your if you sorry you may get an alert if the NHS tr tr contact tracers identify that you've recently visited a venue where someone may have come into contact with COVID-19 um, and if you develop COVID-19 symptoms make sure to record them on the app and follow the government guidelines. Now I'm going to hand you back to Barry where we'll have a discussion on the above and you can ask any questions. Thanks Una and again apologies about the, the IT problems. I think many of you have thankfully been able to have a look at that video so thank you Beck for sharing that within the link on the, the conversation. And we've got through the, the slides really quickly so I'm really pleased about that and hopefully not too fast but now open to discussion. So we presented what the current scenario is within Merton. Cases are increasing. We presented what the test and trace is, which is a service that protects us all, our families and our communities. We presented the new app, which is really simple. It's been designed to be really simple. You download the app, you check in when you go into a venue using the QR codes, and the app will tell you uh, with appropriate advice if, if required. So as our champions, um, please raise your, raise your hand um, and I'll be open to, to hear what do you think about the app? Uh, will you download it? If not, why not? How can we encourage our residents to do so? I will keep an eye out on for who's got hands raised uh, as much as I possibly can. I, I can see that Hetty's put her hand up. Please, Hetty. Hi Hattie, can you go ahead? There we go. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, I just wondered if anyone would like to see just like a sneak peek of the um, big advertising campaign that the government centrally are putting in place this weekend. Um, it'll be hard to miss it. It's going to be across all TV, radio, uh, news outlets. Um, yeah, if anyone's interested, I can just show you, I can share my screen. That'd be fantastic, Hattie, okay. thank you. Hold on, let me just do that. there um, there so you can see um, that there are these adverts that will be coming out on digital media social media they'll be outside advertising display boards there'll be adverts in the press like this uh, these assets will all be available from tomorrow they are embargoed but I thought you might want to see this will look an advert on your phone uh, your smartphone so they've looked at different demographics and different groups. Um, there's some TV and radio ads there as well. Um, and it's all about everyone you love is on your phone. So now the way to protect them is also on your phone, obviously, if you have the smartphone. Um, yeah. And we, they've looked quite carefully at fame audiences. Um, yeah. And how and the rest of it is just the size Thanks. of posters, not very interesting, but there you go. I just thought that might be useful so you That's can see brilliant. what's going to, and this is part of the big download weekend, which starts on Friday. Thanks, Hattie. That's great. And good to see that that early access to those images. Uh, please don't take photos of those guys. It's embargoed. Uh, Karen has come in um, on the, the comments with a question saying, I feel the app is very intrusive. Will it track us when we are at home? Hattie, Una, you're able to answer that question for us about the privacy? Yeah. So privacy, privacy settings have been updated a lot. This has been, um, this app's been developed with the heart, um, can you hear me? With the tech companies, Google and Apple. Um, so privacy is not an issue. Now this, this app traces the virus, it doesn't trace you. So um, there is no way of anyone telling, uh, there's no way of the app being able to decipher who you are. You are a random anonymous code, as Una stated earlier. Um, and actually, when you scan um, the locations which show where you've been at a restaurant or hairdressers or something like that, um, you hold that information on your phone and that's your property. Now, if you choose to share those options, if you test positive for coronavirus, you can, but if you don't want to share them, you don't have to. So it's really just tracking where your num random number's been. No one knows it's you. Um, and I can assure you the privacy is of highest concern. And so this isn't a tracking people device. Unfortunately, it's not, well, it's not that sophisticated. <laughs> it's a tracking where you've been in the virus and making sure that if you want to download it and be part of this, then you leave your Bluetooth on and it will track if you're next to someone else who has the app and then that's how everything links up. Now, if you don't have the app and you can't download it, 
um, you don't have a smartphone or you don't want to, that's fine because whenever you go to a venue, you'll still be able to leave your address and details manually because obviously we still need to be able to do um, contact tracing. So this is just another layer onto the contact tracing that we're already taking seriously in Merton. So it's not, it's not everything. It doesn't supersede it. It's just an extra layer above. Icing on the cake, I would say. Absolutely. A nice, healthy, sugar-free cake. Thank you, Hetty. Um, and Eleanor has responded that it's a good message. Eleanor, I don't know if you mind. Uh, can I bring you into the conversation? Uh, Hello. Can, can you hear me? Know what you think. Can you hear me okay? We can. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought it was really nice. Um, it looks really good. Uh, this is actually um, weirdly the first time I've seen um, anything about the app, um, but I really like that message. Uh, you know, if the app traces the virus, not you, because I've anecdotally heard a lot of people saying, well, they don't want their details everywhere. They don't want their privacy taken away. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of different ways to sort of get that message across that it's not that no one's taking away your privacy no one's going to be tracking you it's about tracking the virus absolutely that's right and i think that's that was a great that that's the message they've come up with and i think that i think it works quite well i think once people realize how this works they hopefully will be reassured that we're just interested in this um tracing system so we can keep everyone safe Thanks, Hattie. I can see that um, Emma Stern has a question or wants to come into the conversation, please. Hello. Um, I have a couple of questions and a comment, if that's OK. Um, I've lost track of how long the um, isolation, isolation period is if you have symptoms that you mentioned at the start of the presentation. Is it seven days? That's a really good question, Emma, and it is it is very confusing, and that's why we're trying to enhance those national messages to get through to the community. Uh, if you have symptoms, you isolate for 10 days. Members of your family then isolate for 14, depending on the results. But what we will do, we will make sure that the links that to those guidances are made really, really clear, including any flowcharts, so we can make that clear. Thank you. Um, regarding the app, I think it's a really great idea. I've been to quite a few restaurants and cafes and um, as you said, they actually handwritten because my, obviously I didn't have the app at the time, but my phone wasn't accepting the barcode when I tried to scan it. So they had a system where you would just write your email address down or phone number. So I think it's a lot better if you can uh, download the app. Um, when you mentioned before that if you go into a cafe and you have an alert that somebody has been in there recently with COVID symptoms or has tested positive, are you not meant to leave that place rather than carry on and sit in there and eat or drink? I think it's more that it wouldn't be that. It, so, so if you've been in, it wouldn't be a live and direct thing because someone would have to go for a test so say last week so I think it's within 14 days say last week you went to a cafe and at, during the time you were at the cafe which is recorded by the phone someone else was there that person's now tested positive for COVID you get an alert on your phone so it wouldn't be where you currently are it's probably gonna it's gonna have a lag because that person would need to get a test there'll be a slight lag it won't be there, an instant thing that's right yeah if you're there at the time that person's not going to be there hopefully they'll be isolating if you see what I mean um, okay, there was a question you. about someone going to... I, I think Emma had one more, sorry. And I, I think Emma had uh, two questions and a comment. Yeah, so I, I've, that, I've done that already. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's and, okay. Uh, Logie, Logie had a really good question about once the app is added into the phone, will it be there forever? Hetty, Una? No, you can delete the app if you want to delete the app. Um, with that, you delete the information that's stored on the app. Like any other app, really. That's Thank great. you. Thank you. Thanks, Logie. Good question. Uh, then Beck's come in. Um, Beck, uh, do you want to talk so you're not just listening to me and my, my lo lovely colleagues from the borough? Do you want to come and ask your question? Cheers, Barry. Yeah, no, it was just a quick one. So obviously you talk about the venues. So is it uh, the local cafes, the restaurants, will they obviously be getting all the QR codes to promote, to advertise? Is that obviously because it's launching tomorrow? So there's going to be a surge of people wanting to start using it. Has that is that already out there in place for these restaurants and cafes to be advertising their QR codes? Yes, 
Good question. And yes, it is. We sent a business uh, newsletter out on Monday. We only were just told that, and, and I'm just pick up a point earlier about it being mandatory. It will be mandatory from tomorrow mm. for certain businesses. So there's close contact ones, hospitality, restaurants, not every single one, but the ones who already have to record details manually. Okay. Um, it is mandatory for them to display a QR code so people have the option to use it. They've been sent information about how they create those um, through various different uh, community groups we've gone through the chamber we've gone through um, some of the business improvement districts so we're hoping we have reached everyone that we can um, and obviously there's a COVID-19 newsletter as well that went out. I mean obviously this is potentially where COVID-19 terms could kick in just to kind of almost be the eyes out there but I mean could we like even if we took a walk up the high street and if we noticed there isn't actually many advertising it we're obviously not going to go in and enforce them to advertise it, but do we let somebody know? Yeah, it's a good idea, Beck. And I know that when the, the app was piloted in two places, it was piloted in Newham and the Isle of Wight. Um, part of the approach there was to enga actively engage those businesses to, so to do exactly what you suggested. That's on our list. So I really appreciate that as a really good idea. Um, I just want to come in with... Um, Bo. Bo made the comment, uh, which it, I think it would be quite difficult to convince individuals, given that we know that phones are traceable. Can I spin that and ask, ask uh, the champions, ask you, how can we convince other people to download? This is going to be an absolutely critical part of us tackling COVID uh, within Merton. So we need to do as much as we possibly can to convince them. Bo, perhaps come in to, to answer your own question. <laughs> how can we do it, Bo? Hi Barry, I think it is about having those conversations, um, but you know, everyone watches popular dramas where we see uh, phones being traced by masks, etc., and numbers unless you have a burner phone. So I, I, you know, I do think it is about having those individual conversations, but I don't think we should assume it's going to be an easy task that everyone is going to say just because. We have a government slogan that says it's the virus that's been traced and not the individual that everyone's going to be convinced. So I think it, you know, it's a slog that, and it's an individual um, to individual conversation as opposed to merely having slogans because I don't think that with a lot of communities will work. Yeah, Thanks, Barry. Anybody want to respond to that? Emma, I think get your hand up again, please. Oh no, I was um I was just um mentioning in the chat that I've seen quite a lot of the QR codes already, but I think Bo was saying there aren't any in Mitcham, but in terms of Merton, I've seen them in Wimbledon quite a lot, so I have started to recognise them. Yeah, and, and the app launches at one minute past midnight, I believe. Um, and so that the you know our businesses do want to comply. You know, we're working closely with regulatory services and the chamber, as kind of Hetty and Unu have said. So people will be complying with with that. Um, so that's really positive. Um, Logie has said that he's got a newsletter that's going out next week. If, if he can have all the details, he can add it to his newsletter. Logie, that is fantastic. That's exactly the type of thing that we really want to work with you really closely on. I know you have a really strong link uh, into the Tamil community, um, and so thank you. We will clearly be following up um, with that. Um, if anybody wants to put their hands up to ask any questions about the app or any comments, any thoughts? Uh, I can see Sarah. Sarah Guest. Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering if we, if you put the kind of how it works alongside the the um campaign that describes it's not exactly what you've been saying, but more about the technicality around privacy, putting sure people to know. Rather than inviting questions, you put it out there and the start, start just so people are very, very clear on that. And that might help. Oh. That, again, that's a really good point, Sarah. And again, I'll, I'll bring in Hetty because I know Hetty's got plans to get the messages out as our senior comms officer uh, on those key messages that we're going to be sent before the app launched. Hetty, can you come respond to that, please? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, definitely. We want to explain how it works. We've already done some social media. I know not everyone follows our social media channel, unfortunately, but um, we've put stuff, as I say, in business newsletters. We're going to send another business newsletter out. We're doing stuff targeted at different um, sections of society and with Logie and Ben's help and also AGK have said they can help. So through all these channels, we'll hopefully reach a good whack of people in this initial um, first week but of course it the push will keep coming for the next at least the next month from the government and we'll be we will be trying to explain how it works and answer off those questions and you know it's not everyone isn't going to download it we're not we're not we know that's not going to happen but we will try our best to make sure everyone's assured about their privacy and about how this really can help protect people that you love also one more question for you um um, it, are we going to be, or is there a signpost into mental health support on the app too? So interestingly, there is um, some general stuff about um, what you have to do when you're self-isolating, but it doesn't link out to um, regional information, so information specific to Merton. Um, and that's why we've got our um, COVID pages updated, and on there there's a list on the Merton government uh, Merton Council, sorry, uh, local government page. There's a list of resources. Yeah, and MBSC will be, um, you know, supporting people as they have done before. But the app doesn't work to do local promotion. I, I meant to say that. I meant the question I have is actually, are there any general signposts in the men mental health support, particularly um, in a general way from the app? No, I don't think there are. I could be wrong. I don't think they are. I'll have to have a look. Um, I mean, one I, of the, the big problems we've might. got, Sarah, is because it doesn't launch till one minute past 12. Uh, I haven't seen it. I haven't been able to work out what's in those key messages either. But what I can say is that we, uh, we've we heard from many of our residents, uh, people that work within the boroughs, our elected members, uh, around the, the real difficulties uh, that we've all had through the last six months. The mental health and well-being, it, it has a significant effect on us. So we're pulling together an approach to, to promote those mental health services, whether they be digital or whether they're the NHS Commission services. And again, we've kind of focused today's discussion with our champions on the app because it's launching tomorrow. Perhaps it's something we can focus on next time or in future meetings, specifically on mental health, so we can kind of try to get those messages out to the community. Um, um, good to integrate it, like integrate it into the app, if I'm saying, rather than having a separate, um, I don't know, with more holistic, holistic care. No, I think it's a really good point. Uh, and we can feed that back to the central team. You know, our director of public health, Dr. Dagmar Zun, has links into the region. Um, so so thank you. Uh, lots of questions coming up. I'm really pleased. Um, there was a question from Bo about uh, translation into other community languages. Are we able to answer that one now? Um, is the app translatable? I believe so, but I'm not sure. I'm, I need to have a look, look back on the assets website and see which languages they've translated. It won't be into every single language, obviously, but I'll need to have a look and, okay. and see. I know the advertising is being translated. <laughs> that would be really helpful, um, Hattie, if you could do that, because um, even if you could just find out which languages, that would help with our comms and communication to the community groups. That's great, thank, thank you. you. I can see a comment from Councillor Holden. Uh, the two MPs might be able to add their key messages to the newsletters. Yes, really good point, Councillor. We, we will make sure we're following up on those. Um, Erin, really good idea, and I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate to have Hetty here. Erin's had, would you welcome, Erin, uh, would you mind coming into the into the conversation and asking Hetty your question? Sorry, I'm putting Hetty on the spot a lot here. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi. Um, so I kind of was, was thinking, and I'm not saying I'll volunteer to do this, um, but like if people, if champions had found themselves in the position of like feeling hesitant to have the app, which I would say I would have been, and now hearing more about how it works, I'm like, oh, okay. So I can see, I can see how that it is more protected than I thought it was. Um, and yeah, if, if people were to make like a video on their social media or um, 
or if they want to record a WhatsApp voice message that can be sent around their friendship groups. Um, yeah, do you think that would be too hard to control because you're not then in direct control of the messages or do you think that might be good because people will feel more connected to someone they know or someone who's a friend of a friend saying, well, I think, I think it might be okay actually than potentially government or local government messages. Yeah, definitely. Um, of course, people can do whatever they want on their own social media channels. We don't, we're not in control of that. If they want <laughs> yeah, to amplify, it or not, I guess. yeah, if they, if they want, well, we're doing a lot of social media anyway, and you'll see a lot. So please amplify those messages if you're worried about not getting it you know, quite right. Um, a couple of things I've done. One is we've got um, one of our friendly GPs, Dr. Mohan yeah, uh, uh He hasn't done it yet. He's got an early version of the app and he's going to make a little video for us um, towards mm -hmm. the end of this week. The other thing I've done is talk to one of our young people who lives in Pollard's Hill um, and I've done some filming with him yesterday about the app so I'll put together a little video and we'll probably concentrate on local messages more next week because we're worried that they might get lost in the social media sort of deluge from central governments we don't want to confuse people so we're going to let them go for this download weekend and then next week we'll pick up with some more local messages but absolutely anything people want to do whether it's over whatsapp i mean those that's the reach we don't have to your trusted friends and family group so please use anything we have if you need anything let me know happy to help cool thank you erin thank you Hattie. i can see that mandy has mandy hargreaves has had her hand up for a while mandy do you have a question for us yeah, hi. You might have covered this already and I might have missed it. Um, schools, are they getting a QR code? I only ask that because we do go into a lot of schools and we don't necessarily have their messages come to us, but it would be like visiting anywhere else for us. We would be a visitor and I just wondered if they'd have the same sort of process and they get the same code. No, schools don't display, do they? They um, You have to be over 16 to download this app as well. So there's an issue there around uh, consent of people. You're only as good as the people in the location you're at having the app, I suppose. <laughs> um, so no, schools aren't getting it. It's just more business venues. Okay, thank you. Places of yeah. worship. Places of worship plus uh, those key civic centres, like the libraries will have the app as well. So again, and again, to having that QR code on the front of, a, of a, a setting or a building will hopefully be an intervention in its own right as well, just to remind us about the, you know, that this, this is a particularly challenging time for all of us. Um, I can see again, Bo's had a really good suggestion about neighbourhood watch members. 20,000 uh, people are on the neighbourhood watch list. Uh, sorry, members list. Uh, yes, I'm following up with Katie later this week, actually, Bo, so that's a really good idea. And again, as champions, if you are aware of networks or groups of people or volunteers, link us into those opportunities and we can follow up on those. I think that's going to be the real huge benefit of this wonderful network that we've kind of just started in the, in the last 43 minutes. Um, there's a question from Ben about presumably parents at drop-off could check in um let us look into that issue i'm not sure it will uh work that way uh that yeah, schools aren't aren't having it sorry just to be clear that they're not that's not where they're focusing they're not it. having the qr but the, clearly people might be identified as a contact if they're spending over uh, 15 minutes at the school gates next to each other in a group oh that yeah that way but you don't check yes. in that will just no, pick no, up no, other yeah. people yeah, yeah. But again, it's it's a good route that we need to focus on engaging those parents through those school newsletters as well about downloading the app because it has that additional functionality on symptom checkers, access to tests, etc. Uh, I can sorry, I'm trying my best to, to multitask, and you all of you know that I can't do that. I think Beck, you've got your hand up again, or is that an old one? I think that's an old. No. Barry, sorry, I dropped in and dropped out, so I might have missed this, so apologies if it's already been. That's okay. We've touched on venues, and you've just touched on it again there, uh, Barry. Is there a list somewhere, or have you covered it? Apologies, because I dropped out for 10 minutes, it's some connection issues, of the actual venues that do have to have this displayed? Because obviously we talked about local cafes. I'm thinking takeaways might be exempt, I might be wrong. Um, restaurants, pubs, worship, places of worship, is there a comprehensive list? And also with that list, can you can locally can you add more to the list if you want to 
Okay, there is a list of the the legal side on which which businesses, which settings, which organisations have to uh, display a QR code. We have that. We can send it through to you just for information. Clearly, it's not the health champion uh, community champion's role to be policing that. That's our no, job within not. the borough and yeah, regulatory yeah. services. But we will definitely send that through to you, Beck. Uh, we're trying not we we try not to change national guidance and uh, to locally. Uh, but what we do try to do is to localise those key messages, if that makes sense, which is, again, what we've heard from the community. Um, I can see that uh, Emma has got her hand up, unless that's an old hand, Emma. Oh, that's gone. And Sarah? Okay, I think I can't see any more hands up. I'm just having a quick scan through the, the comments. Sorry, uh, trying to chair as best as I can. Okay, so how does a uh, question from Karen about how does the QR works and is it required for care homes to display like restaurants or shops? If yes, how do we get this? Um, Hetty, anyway, I don't think the care homes are covered by this app and the requirement to publish a QR on the front. But we will confirm that. No, they're not. It's um. So I was just finding the list for you. Um, no, it's um, it's hospitality, it's leisure and tourism, it's um, who else is it? Hang on, I'm just finding the list for you. Okay. Uh, carry on, and I'll find the list. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. I'm going to have another quick just scan through the comments, and if anybody has any, um. Any uh, Sarah, your hands up. No, okay. Um, what we'll do, I think we've had a, a really helpful and informative discussion there. We will follow up on some of those questions, just buying Hetty some time to find that list. Um, and so. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I think that's really important for us actually in the learning for these meetings to make sure we've got as much time as possible on the agenda for this conversation about the feedback and the issues so that we can give you the appropriate answers as we can. Um, I'm going to go on to the next slide unless any any final comments. If you can I get a are you going to download the app? Give me some nods. I've got some nods. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I can see another comment coming in. Sorry, guys. I've got lots of yeses, uh, and I can see that Hetty's put the, the link uh, in the chat as well. So thank you for doing that, Hetty. Okay, Una, let's go to the next slide, which is essentially uh, uh, to, to close up the, the, the discussion for today. Yep. Sorry, two seconds. Okay. Um, I could just share it again. And while you're doing it, I can see that Sarah said she doesn't have a smartphone, so she won't. And again, it's kind of just recapping that point that the app is kind of that the icing on the cake. Test and trace service still exists. Uh, it's it's a it's a con it's a fundamental service that keeps us all safe. Uh, if you're in contact then uh, with a positive case, uh, then the test and trace service will make contact with you. So this is over and above that existing service. Um, Una's still pulling those slides up, but Beck, uh, do you want to come in very quickly no. and give, give your, do your quick plug verbally? Sorry, ending there. Beck, do you want to come in? Yeah, I'm coming. Sorry, Barry, just taking so long for my mute icon to catch up. Yeah, just a quick plug. Obviously, links in a bit to what Sarah was talking about earlier in regards to mental health and well-being. There's an online information session this evening. We've got around seven people already booked on, and it's covering um, mental health awareness and physical well-being information session brought to you by One You Merton and Health Watch Merton. And within that, there's going to be a range of resources that people can click on, link into, in regards to what One Your Merton are delivering in services linked to stop smoking or healthy living, 
what Merton Uplift are doing, the community hub, social prescribing. So it's going to be hopefully a kind of a, an encyclopedia of wellbeing information. Thank you, Beck. And again, that's a really interesting because again, we can build on these messages because you all represent organisations or services as well as uh, being a community champion, and we can make sure that we're promoting those that the awareness of those services across. Una, can we get to the last slide? Um, it's frozen on me. IT is not being my friend today. Can you see? Can you see my screen? We can just see the front slide. It's okay. I can talk us through it because I. Uh, so, colleagues, our next steps. Um, what we're going to do um, is we're going to share with you uh, our first set of communications with you on Friday. So we will send out the the slides that we've used today. We'll answer any of those questions that you've po you've posed to us within the the chat function. We'll answer those on Friday, and we'll also send you some of those images about the app. So those things that Hetty kind of showed you as a sneak peek, so that you can then email them on, WhatsApp them to your friends and the, on your networks. Uh, we will follow up on those key opportunities that you've mentioned about MP newsletters and the uh, other opportunities there. Our next drop-in meeting uh, will be next week, next Wednesday. These will take place every week, 12 till 1 and then 7 till 8 p.m. We will develop an agenda uh, on a key theme or issue. Um, so again, if you've got any thoughts that might be, you think will be really helpful for next week's theme, get in contact with us. Um, and what you can do, really please uh, spread the messages uh, on the app to your networks. Um, if you haven't already, Una kind of covered this already, um, but please register uh, via the link. We will send that out. To our, our, Una, could we put that on the chat, please? Because without yeah. you registering, we're unable to send you the details of the other and the, the slides and things for Friday, and it really helps us manage that. Feedback to us. If you have any conversations within your, your business, your organization, your workplace, your friends and families, tell us what's not working. Uh, the team here in Merton, we're, we're really keen to, uh, it's going to be essential for us to work with the community to understand that lived experience and what's taking place. Let us know, we can work together on it. And finally, uh, tell your friends, family, colleagues, networks, communities uh, that hopefully uh, this has been helpful and informative and we want to grow the numbers of people that are participating in the in this champions program um final thing is just thank you um i really do appreciate and i know that our, our team in merton appreciate the time that you've given us today uh, i think this can be, make a real difference uh, to uh, understanding and tackling covid uh, in merton and across london so thank you for your time we're doing this session again at 7 p.m. tonight if you wanted to take part. Um, but I think Una's, uh, sorry, Hetty's got a hand up for any final comment, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, could you unshare your screen, please, Una? And I wanted to ask people if they would be happy. We wanted to thank you um, for taking part publicly. And I wondered if I could do a screenshot just of everyone's face. But obviously, if you don't want to be in it, turn your camera off. Um, and then we can do a public thank you on social media. We're keen to... So thank you and show people, you know, what we're doing and what you're doing to help us. Um, so there we go. That's a nice one. Um, it won't have everybody. I wonder if I can scroll 26. across. We've had 26 participants today, mm. by the way. And I think that's really, really strong. So thank you. Uh, if everyone... Oh, sorry. Whoever's in the screen. No, it's right. Smile. Give a wave. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so we're finished for today. We're six minutes early, um, but I appreciate your time today. We will follow up and we'll speak to you all very, very soon. Thank you.